this video is very important to me. You know what? <laughs> you see, I am always watching videos on B-roll sequences related to beer, you know, cans, glasses, and all that. But I thought about this, that there are not so much content on shooting B-roll sequences that had to do with bottles, specifically wine bottles, all right? So I thought about this and of course, I had to think about something to put together to create a nice B-roll sequence, but because I don't have so much um, insight and so much experience, let me put it that way, in shooting wine bottles, I had to research, first of all. Secondly, I had to take a look at the things that I'll need for the setup from the bottle to whatever it will be that the glasses were gonna be set on. And of course, talking about glasses, I needed a wine glass, a tall one for that matter, that would look elegant enough for what it was or what is actually supposed to be used for. So, of course, I had to set off to town to gather some few things, but I thought about this, that the boards and the tables that are already in the house kind of don't really necessarily look good. I mean, talking about the concept that I want to put across. So after watching some few videos on YouTube and looking into how um, wine bottles are supposed to be dressed, looking up at some content pictures, particularly on Pinterest, I came to the decision that I was going to go for a wooden board that had some depth all right so i drew this in my head put it down on paper head on the following morning to a carpenter to put this all together i actually left behind the design explained everything i wanted him to put together for me um it wasn't so much of a difficult thing to explain so having this simple description given to him I left with um, a friend to town to gather the things one after the other. So we went to town to buy some bottles. So um, once we went into the mat, we had a lot of options to choose from. And um, looking at something elegant, I thought about using something golden and uh, you know something black to make the blend work some more because um, colors like gold and black actually work hand in hand. And also considering that uh, I'm gonna work against a white background, the black would definitely stand out so much. So I made that choice and picked that up. Make sure that the bottles were clean enough because this was video and wasn't photography. And if it were to be photos, it would be very easy to clean out blemishes. So um, because this was video, as I said before, it wasn't going to be an easy one so i had to be sure that the labels were all tidy and uh, there were little to no marks on the glasses as well as the labels so i brought them home and uh in the evening of course this friend that i went to town with couldn't wait up he had to travel so i had to find another pair of hands to help me out so i got my faithful friend um eugene he came along to help out so we put it all together set things down the table we needed a table of course to raise some height and i had this interesting but um normal softbox kind of that I think it's called a bulb or you can call it a lantern, all right? And uh, the nature of this softbox is that when you put in a light, it shines all around wherever that you place a light because uh, it doesn't have so much of um, blacks around it. Everywhere is diffused around it and it looks like an onion. And so light will just disperse in all directions. So that's what I went with for the key light. And also I went with several other lights um, like um, LED panels, two of them. And uh, I had yet another interesting uh, softbox, or will I say a diffusion light modifier that I could place in um, my LED panel. So I put it in for more softening for um, the purpose, which is gonna come very soon. And uh, I set it all together down there. I had some few light stands to mount them on. And of course, uh, because I didn't have enough light stands, I had to have my friend help me out holding out some of the lights. Talking about setting up the table, I had a wooden artifact that was designed by uh, the carpenter, brought in, placed it on the table, put in the wine bottles, and I rolled them across and took some few shots of it to be sure that I got some interesting shots. But one thing I didn't notice was that the paint that we used to dress the wooden artifact was actually still not dry. 
<laughs> when I took out the bottles, looked at all the tracing and the marks that were left behind by the wet paint, ah, it caused a lot of problems for me because I had to take my time, use alcohol to wipe it all away. But luckily for me, I noticed that some of the traces were not on the label of one bottle as much as I would not have wished. <laughs> so it was a good one. And uh, I used that one basically for more of the close-ups in the shots. What the wet paint took me through made me reconsider my plan. So I had to turn the wooden structure over so I could place the bottles on that side instead. But luckily and interestingly, it was much even better than the dark painting within the depth of the wooden structure. So uh, I would say it was a blessing in disguise anyway. <laughs> so I turned it over and used the rolled the bottle as much as I could. But I was paying much attention on the light modifiers reflection on the glass bottles so um, you notice that if there's anything reflective whatever light source it is is going to actually appear in its form on the bottles and i didn't want this onion bulb you know appearing on the bottles so it didn't look flattering enough so i had to bring a diffusion sheet out of a reflector a 5 in one reflector place it in front of the lantern and uh, yes i could change the shape of the light that was being cast against the glass bottle. Then I introduced a rotating disc. Using that, you know, intensified the look of my video and it really helped me so much because I could control the rotation and I could have a seamless um, flow with the shots that I was taking with the bottle placed right on top of that too. So I got some nice shots, close up shots of the bottles, made sure that the bottles stayed in a pair and I took some shots of uh, some light dynamism. I hovered the light, the LED panels, particularly over the bottles, of course, with the diffusion in front of the light so that it could, you know, diffuse the light somewhat, make it as soft as possible. So I got those shots out of the way. Still with the help of Eugene, my friend, I had to set up another atmosphere, another environment, different scene for the bottle. So I used some gels. Interestingly, I had lying around my room a blue and an orange gel. And you know what we always look at when we are talking about complementary colors, contrasting colors like, you know, um, orange and teal. It does actually work very, very well. So um, I used the orange gel on one side, cast against the bottle from the right of the frame. And I had the blue gel also down below, cast against the wall to turn the wall from what it was, which was white, to blue. And uh, took some shots, did some nice depth of field kind of shots, having one bottle placed behind the main bottle that was supposed to have its label filmed. Got that out of the way, took some different angles of the shots and uh, made sure that I had everything perfectly filmed. And I moved on to a more interesting shot, which is pouring the wine into the glass. All right, so this wasn't, uh, didn't, it didn't really take me through a whole lot of, you know, trial and error because I had watched some few videos on YouTube and I had a clear idea or a fair idea about how I was going to undertake this particular shot. So um, I needed to, first of all, get a shot of the bottle raised over the glass, having the camera underneath the glass. <laughs> Interestingly, of course, having the, the, the camera underneath the glass and the bottle being poured out its wine into the glass. So the camera's perspective is going to shoot it from below and it should still have the liquid being poured in front of the camera to give that perspective of you, the audience, seeing the wine being poured into the glass in the perspective of the glass receiving the wine. I don't know if I'm making sense. <laughs> okay, so that was just about that. But this is how I actually undertook that particular process. I used a glass sheet, placed it right on top of um, two containers. Uh, yeah, funny setup, I know. <laughs> placed the camera right underneath the sheet of glass. Did some few trials. Of course, it wouldn't really work because getting the wine point in the right spots right against the lens wasn't going to be an easy deal. So I had to do a lot of trials and luckily I had this camera GH5, which I used to shoot the whole sequence, which comes with a flip out screen. So it was much easier to see the 
shot as I took it. All right, so I poured it with some few trials and I nailed it. Of course, I needed to wipe off the spillages of the glass and uh, yeah, so I could take the several shots after the other, one after the other. So when that was done, I needed to get a close up of the wine in the glass with its look being really projected well. So I had to have a diffuse light right behind the glass and uh, shone the light right through the diffusion against the liquid. So I had this, my camera close to the glass as much as possible. I don't have a macro lens, so I had to get it as close as possible, zoom it all the way. Try to use a not so much of a depth of field, I mean a shallow depth of field, so that I would be able to still have the liquid in depth as well as the glass as much as I could, but still having some depth of field in there. So with the help of the light, I needed to only create some drips because I had already shot some shots of the liquid being poured into the glass with all its, you know, holiness and glory. <laughs> so putting in some drips, I only needed to squeeze out some drips or drops, if you know, if you will, into the liquid as the camera was still shooting the wine in the glass so with some few drips i got some ripples really nice and clear with a very nice soft diffusion coming from the light and the diffusion sheet right against the camera so when that was all gotten out of the way i had to create a whole entire new set with a different lighting configuration so i had one of my led panels right below the set to shine against the background to create a graduated you know yellow tone against or warm tone against the background with the bottle set next to the wine glass i got some few shots and they were just wonderful so with some light from the left and another light from the right to rim out the bottle and ship it out against the background i was able to achieve this look and i was actually satisfied with it and in the end it was just a wonderful uh learning curve to make me understand what i actually needed to do again if i should uh tackle such a shoot again in the future so i really hope you enjoyed this video if you enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up subscribe to my youtube channel if you haven't and turn on the post notification button to be always notified of future videos anytime i post them over here on my youtube channel and until the next video have a wonderful day see ya